In Fallout Wasteland Warfare the game, players assemble their own crews from factions, allies, and iconic characters from the series. Today, I'm going to be painting up one of the most iconic characters, Hammer, from the Super Mutants box set. We're going to do our best to follow the box art from the Fallout Wasteland Warfare series here. The paints that you're going to need here can be found from the War Paints range, our Metallics, and even our Effects range. Starting off, we're going to need our brand new airbrush medium. We're going to mix this one to two parts with combat fatigue. So we're going to spray this in a top-down fashion to create a simple and realistic highlight on Hammer. Before we move on to painting the rest of Hammer's skin and the rest of the model itself, we're going to block in the eyes. You know, painting eyes can be a little bit tricky, but here's a simple technique that even the newest painters can pull off. We're just going to take a little bit of brain matter beige, thin down on our wet palette, and we're gonna apply this with a detail brush just in the inserts in the eyes. It's okay if you get this a little bit on the cheeks of the model. We can go back and clean that up in the highlighting stage, but the wash should take care of the rest of that, making sure you clean up and give some definition to the eyeball. So we're taking quick shade, military shader. This is the perfect skin tone for this kind of aged and worn looking orc monster hero in uh, hammer that we have here. So we're going to apply this quick shade military shader all over the skin of this model. Careful not to let it pull too much into the recesses. If it begins to pull up on the surface, like you can see here on the top of his head, you can just wick it away very simply. Wet your brush in a little bit of water and clean that up. Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and continue applying this to all the skin tones on this model, on his arms, his elbows here, as you can see, and of course the fingers, this is where you're gonna see some really great definition. Once the wash is a time to dry, we're gonna go back to combat fatigues because the wash has darkened down the model a little bit and apply a highlight using our detail brush. We're just gonna pick out the ridges on the model, like the brows of the eyes, the tip of the nose, and the tops of the cheeks here. Careful not to work this highlight into any of the recesses. Here on the fingers, we're just gonna pull out the highlight across the tips of the fingers. And you can already see the contrast and saturation starting to develop. I'm gonna pick out the ears here. This is very important. He's got actually really cool ears. They're almost like tiny elven ears. I really like this model. It's a lot of fun to paint up. Going to the knuckles here, we're just gonna apply a little bit of that Combat Fatigues highlight there and on the tips of the fingers. And now we are just about done with the highlight. Now that our skin is complete, we're going to move on to painting all of the cloth and armor on this hammer model. We're going to be using the same wash on these areas, so we'll save a bit of time by blocking them in now. We're going back to the wet palette. This time we've applied our Hydra Turquoise. This is probably my all-time favorite color from the War Paints lineup, next to maybe Kraken Skin, but we're going to apply this to the wet palette. Keep those paints thin. We're going to apply this all over the armor on this model. Now, this hammer model has some very ornate details on it and some texturing on his armor plating. So we wanna apply this very thin and the wet palette is very good for that because it's gonna keep those paints workable, pliable, and to the right consistency for the duration of the product. We're just applying this to all of the armor bits on the model. We will be applying two thin coats just to make sure that we get good even coverage and don't obscure any of the fine detail. As you can see here, I'm just applying this to the the, the, the thigh panel armor. I'm not sure where he gets this armor. It looks like it's repurposed armor. It's probably pulled off of a truck or something of that nature. I'm not really sure, but it looks really cool and it contrasts really great with the orc skin tones. Again, we're following the box art. Hydra Turquoise is the perfect match for this step. After we've applied our second thin coat of Hydra Turquoise, we're gonna go to Royal Cloak and we're gonna go back to the airbrush thinning this down in a one to two part ratio with our airbrush medium. And we're just gonna pick out very subtle highlights. I'm focusing, as you can see, right in the center of our Hydra Turquoise, and this is gonna add some nice variation. Now this is a very weathered model in the box start. So this isn't a very clean highlight, don't worry. We're just doing this to bring out some contrast, some shading, some highlights very simply. This is gonna get weathered and mucked about later on in this tutorial, but this is a nice and easy way very fast and loose way to create some interest and, and focal points on the model before we get into the weathering stages later on in this tutorial. And as you can see on screen, it's already beginning to pop a little bit with that simple application of Royal Cloak to all of the armor.
Now we're going to move on to painting all of the cloth on the model. For this, we're going to be using Wolf Gray, and it matches the box art almost perfectly. I love Wolf Gray because it is a nice bluish, almost lavenderish color gray. We're just going to apply this to all of the cloth on the model. There is quite a bit, so just take your time here and make sure you don't paint this over any of the skin or that turquoise armor, which we've previously painted. Once we've based in all of the cloth, we're going to take werewolf fur and we're going to thin this down and with a, a wargamer detail brush, we're going to very carefully apply this across all of the rope belts that Hammer has on him. We're also going to apply this to the hilt of his hammer and we're taking some skeleton bone and we're just going to apply a pre-highlight across the top. Don't worry if this is a bit messy, it'll be cleaned up in the wash stages later. Now with uniform gray, you can see I started to apply it to the base already. We're going to apply this to the hammer head on Hammer's hammer. How many times can we say hammer in this tutorial? And then we're also going to apply this to this little piece of pipe coming out of his armor. I'm not sure what this is. Just be fast and loose here. Thin down your paints. Make sure we get good, even coverage. Next up, we're going to be taking Rough Iron. This is a great color from our Metallics range. You can find this in our brand new Metallics paint set, which is available at stores and online now. We're going to apply this to some of the metallic bits on the model, like the gun, the backpack, power pack, whatever you want to call that, and this big copper pipe running through the scenic base. Moving on to Royal Cloak again with a stippling brush, we're just going to apply this in a stippled fashion to create even more texture to the armor. Again, this is a highly weathered model, and this stippling action is going to create some simple highlights as we work through this process, but it's also going to apply some texture, which we really want for this dirty, grungy, super mutant. Just take your time with very little paint on the bristles. We're almost going to flick this across kind of like a dry brush and then just jabbing it very gently with some of this royal cloak to bring out some of the highlights and add that texture to the model. Then we're going to take some plate mail metal and with a dry brush we're just going to drag this across some of the edges again to add some variation and texture to the model. This is almost like a highlight. The silver is working as a highlight across that hydro turquoise, but it's weathering as well. As you can see on the model, it's adding some nice contrast, some interesting parts. We're going to brush this across the hammer too, as, almost as if it's a stone hammer, but it's been worn so much that you're getting some of that metal flake out of there. And then we're going to dry brush this across all of the rough iron across just for a nice simple highlight before we apply our wash. Take your time here. And you know, it less is more sometimes, and if you need more, you can always apply more of that dry brush later. It's harder to take that away. You have to go back and paint it over again. So just take your time with very little paint on the brush. Flick those bristles across the raised edges of the areas where you want to focus this dry brush, and then you can pull out some of those highlights and add that texture to the model. All right, now we're going back to that rough iron and we're taking our dry brush and we're going to keep stippling just around the edges, really pushing that contrast, really adding some of that weathering effect very gently, especially with this color because it is a much darker. You can see I applied a little bit too much. Just wipe it away with my thumb there. You're just going to apply this. You want to be very gentle. Remember, you can always go back and add more. So less is more here. Apply it in interesting spots. Create some deviation across the armor. You don't want this to be too uniform. You're just stippling that rough iron on the top. And once we apply the wash, it's going to bring it all back down together for a really great worn in and weathered look. So again, just with the rough iron and a dry brush, very little paint on the brush. We're going to flick this across some of the raised areas and stipple this on for some nice, simple chipping and weathering effects on this hammer model. Now that we've based everything in, it's time to move on to the major washing of this model. This we are using Quick Shade Strong Tone, one of our most popular washes in the Army Painter range, a favorite amongst pro painters and everyday hobbyists alike. We're applying this over the blue armor, we're applying this over that gray, that wolf gray cloth, and we're also going to apply this over atop all of the metallic eras on this hammer model. It looks a little bit dingy. That's what we want. We're not thinning this down. This isn't a focused wash. This is an all over wash. We can clean it up later because we're going for that very weathered and dirty look, just like the box start on the Fallout Warfare Super Mutants paint set. Don't forget to apply this all over the base of your hammer model as well. 
I told you it's one of my favorite colors, Hydro Turquoise and Royal Cloak. This combo is great. We're going back to it again. And we're stippling with a character brush here. You know, this isn't a, a, a standard or traditional edge highlight. We're just taking this and we're going to dab this and almost feather it onto some of the areas to break up some of the rough iron and some of the silver to bring out that blue, bring it back up to that turquoise blue color, which is just a very simple stippled motion. You can see I'm just tracing it here. It's adding to the chipping effect that we have been working on. We're gonna draw this under and do some little edge highlights in these bullet holes and these holes in the armor. And you see these areas where there's raised areas on the model. I'm not sure if it's different materials that were just painted over, but we're just gonna trace underneath of it and create a highlight a nice simple highlight to get that effect. We've got the silver on top and then the blue on the bottom in some areas and then this royal cloak on top and the silver and rough iron on the bottom. It gives some great and you know, a very realistic look and you're gonna see once we're finished with this model how realistic this weathering effect actually appears once we get to the rust stages. Before we can move on to those rust stages though, we have to begin highlighting all of the cloth on the model. It does look a little bit dirty. It does look a little bit dingy. This is one of the areas that has no chipping because it's very difficult to chip fabric. So we're gonna apply wolf gray in a very simple highlight, making sure we leave some of that strong tone in the recesses. After we've applied the wolf gray, we're gonna move on to fog gray. This is the perfect choice for a highlight. Very simply, inside all of the initial highlights of wolf gray, we're gonna apply the fog gray just to really push the contrast on this part of the model, on the cloth of the model. You can see I'm just staying inside those lines of the wolf gray and the strong tone, very simple here with that highlight. This is probably the finest detail that we're gonna see on the model, all of those little ridges in the rope belts around our hammer model. We have very thin down skeleton bone and a detail brush, and we're just gonna dot this in. You can see that I've moved the model in my left hand and just angled it so that it's very simple for me to draw these tiny traces of texture on the rope. All right, now we are moving on to the base of the model. This time we're applying a dry brush of War Paints Ash Gray. Now, if you've been following along to any of the tutorials that we've been doing, dry brushing is a very common technique that we use. We apply some paint to the bristles of our dry brush. We remove some of the excess paint onto a paper towel or a towel and then we trace very gently and flick the paint, the very subtle amount of paint that's on those bristles across the raised areas of the model. There's a little bit more paint on this brush because I'm, I'm okay if we get a little bit more of the ash gray on the model. There's a lot of texture on this base and I'm confident by just dragging that brush across, it's gonna pull out the highlights while leaving that quick shade wash, that strong tone wash in the recesses. Now get ready because Here's where the model really begins to come to life. I've not gotten many opportunities to showcase some of our effects paints, and this is one of my favorite effects war paints, Dry Rust. Dry Rust is a very matte and very heavy pigmented orange paint, so it dries extremely matte, just like you would imagine a rust effect to be. So I'm gonna use this in a couple different manners, in a feathering technique, in a stippling technique, a dry brushing technique, and we're also gonna use this in a washing technique. Now. Right now I'm just dry brushing and kind of stippling some of this effect on, starting more concentrated in the center and working the orange out into the other areas for a very natural rusted effect, very similar to the boxed art. And then I'm going to use a feather technique. Now I've watered down the paint just a little bit, this time with a little bit of our quick shade wash mixing medium and some water. I'm gonna apply this into the lower recesses as you can see, I'm just dabbing the tip of this character brush up and working that wash, feathering it in, almost stippling it in very gently with the tip of the brush for a very realistic rust effect. Again, applying this almost as a wash into the recesses, drawing it in there and taking the excess paint that remains on the brush and feathering it out for a very realistic rust effect. Even when you water it down, this dry rust effect paints, once it dries, you see it looks a little bit shiny on some areas here on the model, but once it dries down, it dries a very, very flat matte finish. I'm gonna apply this to the shoulder pads, the crease here. I'm just gonna make sure I work all of those orange pigments. You can see I'm feathering and, and just kind of stippling that pigment into those recesses because I want it to be very concentrated in the deepest areas 
and I will drag and pull and feather it out till I get the desired effect that I want. If you followed along to our recent color theory video where I talked about the complementary colors, blue and orange are obvious complementary colors because they oppose each other on the color chart and the color wheel. I think that this orange rust effect combined with this bluish turquoise really makes the model here. I've gone ahead and finished the base with some swamp tufts and I'm really digging how this turned out. I think we did a great job of trying to replicate and achieve the same effect as the box art. Let me know in the comments what you think. Here you go. Fallout Wasteland Warfare Super Mutants Hammer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up Hammer for you here today. Remember that you can find all the products used in this video at www.thearmypainter.com from your friendly local game store or from your favorite online retailer such as Amazon. Remember the magic of miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.